What's up, y'all? We're back with another episode of Hoop Ish, and this is a special one. We have the one, the only, one of the greatest sports journalists in the game right now, a black woman in sports, the legendary Taylor Rook. Of course, thank you. That was so sweet. That was so nice. Thank you. I'm like, please follow me around everywhere and just. <laughs> I got you. I will be your personal hype woman. I'm also under five feet, so, you know, no one will really notice me. I'll be like, Taylor Rooks, Taylor Rooks. Um, a walking subwoofer. <laughs> yeah, no, literally. I'll have, like, a little megaphone. Um, but no, thank you. Have, like, the bottles and the lights. <laughs> oh, that's all I've ever wanted in life. I would love to be your personal bottle girl. I also just had, like, the worst, just, like, summer league moment just flashing in my head uh hearing that <laughs> yes <Yeah. laughs> that's amazing well how you doing today i know it's a crazy busy time of the year and you've been traveling but how's everything going everything is really great um you know our thursday night football season just ended so now i get to you know really hone in on on all of things basketball which is really nice it also means a little less travel still travel um but some some calm and peace in, in the workspace for sure yeah that's amazing no we can only imagine like between football and basketball right i mean we're just basketball and it feels it's year round mm -hmm. with every level but for you right like i can only imagine going back and forth how crazy it, it must be yeah it definitely gets wild but it's fun of course because for so long I was doing just uh you know the NBA which was really great but to be able to continue to add different things and show versatility and really just be a general sports personality has been really nice to just continue to add things to my repertoire but since you know the NBA is really where I was cutting my teeth it's nice when I get to do that and focus on doing just that yeah, that's amazing. I feel like everyone knows you as Taylor Rooks, but we're going to take it back and kind of get to know you a little bit more. Can you tell us about your upbringing? You come from a big sports family, right? Football. Yeah, yeah. So my my dad played football um, at the University of Illinois. He was a running back there. Um, and then my uncle was a Hall of Famer with the Cardinals, Lou Brock. Um, and then my other uncle played in the NFL. His name's Marvin Woodson. He played for the Steelers, the Saints. Um, so I really did just like grow up around sports my whole life. But even though it was like the men in my family that were athletes and were actually playing, my mom is one of the biggest sports fans you will ever meet. Like my mom is really, really what got me into like playing fantasy football or sitting and watching the games with my dad because that's what she would do. And so it was never even like weird to me if women were into sports. I thought everyone was into sports. And so I never felt like I couldn't be in the space because I saw so many women in my life that loved sports. And it's really cool now to see that this is something that you can get into, like regardless of what your interests are. And women are some of the most knowledgeable sports fans, some of the most passionate sports fans. And it's cool, yes, you of course. Um, and it's cool to see because I really did get a lot of my love of the game from my mom. Of course, there was a lot of the men too, but my mom was a really key piece to me getting to do this and loving it so much. Yeah, that's amazing. Did you play sports growing up? Yeah, I mean, like when I was in high school, I did track, um, I played volleyball a little bit. Growing up, I played soccer, played tennis, but I knew I was not going to be like Serena. I always say that. And I'm like, so I didn't think it was for me. I was like, I either want to be the greatest to ever play or I'm not going to do this. And I knew I wasn't going to be the best. <laughs> What was that moment? Because I think like everyone that yes. works in sports, like 99% of people that work in sports were former athletes that yep. like hit like a point where it was like, okay, I got to figure out how else I'm going to stay involved in the game. In the, in the game. Do you remember what that point was for you? Well, so my thing, like first off, you're absolutely right. But it was way worse for me because it was like, I was very young and just realized this wasn't the thing for me. And I very mm -hmm. vividly remember I had a track meet and they were having me run the 400, which I liked the 100, I liked the 200. I am genuinely fast, but I'm like, fast for how long? And the 400 was like a <laughs> whole situation. Um, so I'm doing that. Obviously, you know, I start off hot, which is sort of like where I went wrong. You know, you kind of need to pace yourself a little bit, but I start off hot, whatever. 
I come in like second to last place. And I was like, this is the worst day of my life. I'm not doing this ever again. Needless to say, I never ran the 400 again. Um, but it was bad. It was one of those things where like at the end of the meet, my like parents met me at the end of the track, you know, because they <laughs> knew I was like going to be upset. Um, so that's what I remember the most. But it was truly kind of before that, that I was thinking, this is something I do for fun and to be around my friends mm -hmm. and stay in shape, um, but not to like eventually make me money. So you knew pretty early then. Yeah. Like yeah. being bad at that wasn't why I made the pivot. It's just more right. like help me along the way. <laughs> yeah. I love that for you. Some of us had to learn the hard way that yeah. sports was not for us. Some of us held on like as long as we could. As long <laughs> as we possibly could. I'm 4'11". And obviously everybody has a job, right? We are opinionists. Yeah. We are going to say like when athletes do something right or wrong, what we feel like was the right call or what would have been the right shot. Was it a bad shot? Like I get that's mm -hmm. That's a part of the job, but I think that knowing so personally, like how difficult it is to be an athlete mm. kind of makes me not be like the kind of person that thinks I know more about playing the sport than them. Right. Like a lot, mm. my critiques come from a place of spectatorship. I think um, a place of just general humanity and really just a place of like, okay, this was obviously like, why did you do that? You know? But I'm never mm -hmm. going to think that I'm going to like out intricacy you. And I don't think mm -hmm. that that is the way that we should think about um, the way that we critique players, if that makes sense. Yeah. We yeah. analyze sports. I, I feel like we're at a point where we yeah. like overanalyze sports. I mean, if you just turn on TV, like everything's a debate. Everything's like yes. a hot take. Yep. Like, why can't we just like. And maybe I'm oversimplifying it a little bit, but like just like consume sports again. Yeah. Like I love just like being a fan. Like I love just watching yes. a game and not having to like dissect like every little play call or shot attempt or whatever. Like I just want to like be a fan of sports again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. yeah I, I totally agree. Yeah. I totally agree. I think that so many things have just become about like proving your point. Like the conversations aren't about watching the game, it has really mm -hmm. become about, okay, what is your thought on the game? And Hey, get it how you live, right? I'm in no way like critiquing you. <laughs> that just isn't my style. My style is like, I know what I'm talking about. I I watch the game. I know the personnel. I know the players. I I understand the things that, you know, make them tick, what they are interested in. And that is how I try to approach the way um, I discuss sports. Yeah, I love that you say that because I feel like that's a huge critique of people in sports media is like, oh, but did you even play? Or, oh, like, are you even a player? <laughs> and it's like, I never claimed to be. Like, I'm four foot 11. You won't see me dunking anytime soon. So, <laughs> claim to be able to play. But I can say, like, when I, if I feel like you're playing good or bad, like, I don't need, mm. like they say, I don't need to be a chef to know if food tastes good. And I just think that talking about sports Ooh, in that that's way. A lot. Is like people that's in a lot of ways people trying to like gatekeep who's able to have opinions about things like this mm -hmm. um and that's also not how we should operate in the space either yeah well, no you, completely agree you brought up like discussing sports like in the terms of just like discussing like watching the sports and consuming the sports and then talking and now that's like that's literally your life is like the you know what i know you for is like the one-on-one -on -one conversations that yeah. you have with players so i kind of see like how there's a connection between like yeah. how you look at the game and now like what you do for a living mm -hmm. uh, yeah no well i mean thank you because that's that's really what i want to be known as like i want to be the person that if you wanted to sit and have a real conversation about the game about yourself about your why about your what you say, okay, I want to sit down with Taylor. Um, and that is the kind of environment that I try to foster when I'm doing the interviews. And not just because I think that it is, you know, very true to myself. I also think it is more interesting. Like I always say, I don't, of course I care about like why you missed the last shot or why you're not making your free throws mm -hmm. or, or why you didn't win the big game. But I'm really interested in like, what it was like feeling those feelings alone and at home and how you bounce back from those. And like that to me is, is more interesting because anyone can sit and talk about the X's and O's um, and what the coach did wrong and, and, you know, the bad defense on the play, but I don't know if everyone can get the other person to discuss those things. I don't know if everyone right. can get 
a player to be honest about themselves, about their lives, um, and feel open enough and like vulnerable enough to discuss things outside of what they do and more about who they are and also how what they do impacts who they are. And I think that is like a very specific specialty um, that isn't always, you know, relevant or paramount in the space. Um, so I feel like it, it fills a need, if that makes sense. Yeah, I'm curious. So you studied broadcast journalism, right, in college? But were you ever interested in like psych, sociology? Because that's also a lot of like, you know what I mean? Like figuring out humans and the way that they interact. Or are you just a, a people person? Yeah, so I love, love, love sociology. I actually was minoring in it. I ended up not minoring in it. But I, I started my first all of freshman year and then the first half of my sophomore year, I was on that track. Um, and it's just really, even beyond like liking that, I've always loved humans. Like I'm very much so a people person. I like to get to know others. I like to learn about them. I like having conversations. And I don't know if, if people are always trying to genuinely get to know other people, but mm -hmm. I enjoy that aspect of life. Um, and so I think that bleeds into the work too. But yeah, I definitely was into sociology, not too much psychology outside of the fact that I have a therapist, um, but that's really it. Yeah, no, I love that. I studied sociology instead of journalism. So that's why I asked. I was like, she seems like she would like Soch. So that's, that's super cool. Um, just to get a little bit, uh, I went to Mount Holyoke College in Massachusetts. Yeah, um, just a little bit more of your backstory so we can get to know you. What made you kind of get interested in broadcast journalism in the first place? Like, did you have like, you know, someone that you looked up to watching on TV? Did you always like being on camera? Like, how did you kind of step into that lane? Yeah, I mean, I used to love watching the news. Like, I loved how the newscasters sounded, you know, like the cadence you do, like earlier today, there was, I loved hearing them like talk like that. Um, so I would sit with my mom and there was a woman in um, Atlanta that we would watch. I'm from Gwinnett County, but so we would get those mm -hmm. Atlanta stations and it was Monica Kaufman or Monica Pearson, whichever you wanna, you wanna call her now. Um, but I'd watch her and I was just enamored with how it was like her job to tell everybody what happened. I just always thought that was really cool. Um, of course, I loved Oprah. Like, I just think it was really cool how watching Oprah was appointment viewing. Like, you knew that when you got mm. off the bus, every, like most people in their homes was watching Oprah. And I just thought that was also really cool that like her voice held held that kind of weight um, amongst culture and amongst society. And when I was a kid, I had posted this on my Instagram like a year ago. I would like set up my camcorder and interview myself. So like I would ask myself a question and some days I was a singer, some days I was an actor, some days I was a tennis player and I would like create an interview and record it. Um, and they're just like hilarious interviews. I'm asking myself ridiculous questions, but I've just always thought asking people questions and getting the answers to them was like, it's the most simple thing you could do that is also like the most complex thing you can do. And that's why I like just asking things. Um, it's it's really fun to me. That's do you still so have those cute. tapes? Yeah. Did you make them on like your computer? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I posted one of them on Instagram. And it's so funny because it's like I smile and I go like, when did you want to become a singer? And then I go, well, <laughs> I wanted to be a singer when I... <laughs> They're like ridiculous videos, but yeah, I still have them. That is so fire. That's Wait, so what fire. What would little Taylor think of you now? You know what I mean? Like she's not making up these personalities, right? Like you've interviewed the biggest names in the game. Like what would she think of you now? I mean, I say this very genuinely. I think that little Taylor would not be surprised. Like. Mm. I have had an idea of what I want in my life to be for a really long time. And I have always tried to take the steps for my life to look like that. And there was never a time that I thought I wouldn't be able to accomplish all of the things that I set out to. So a lot of the time when I'm doing things, I'm saying this is what was supposed to happen because this is what I worked for. Like I have wanted to be 
this and this person for as long as I can remember. I think it's really important for women, especially like to sit back and say, I had a goal, I accomplished that goal. And I'm not surprised by the fact that I accomplished it because sometimes we feel like we have to be like, so, um, I don't want to use humble as the word, but we Mm -hmm. are like forced to feel like we have to be incredibly like incredibly, I am going to use humble, incredibly humble that we are doing this, but the men never feel that way. Like I am thankful and I am grateful and I have been so lucky in my life because, you know, the only reason I'm able to do this is because there's been people that believed in me and supported me and gave me a chance and watched my stuff. But it is also so important that you say like, I'm also the reason um, Mm -hmm. and I put in the work to do this. And so, Mm -hmm. yeah, like whenever people ask me, like, did you think that this would happen with your life? I really did. And I think that there's so much more that I want to do. There's so many things that I have to get better at. Uh, There's so many things that I haven't tackled. And I just think it's exciting that like you will always have time to like reach what you have wanted to be always. Mm-hmm. Preaching. I love You're that. You're preaching. Give yourself credit. Exactly. Yeah, give yourself all the credit. You deserve it and more. That's amazing. Um, I think we're going to pivot a little bit and we'll talk, you know, a little bit more hoops. But when it comes to your interviewing style, right, I know there's been kind of the thing between a journalist versus a personality, but you've like mastered the art of interviewing. Like, what's your approach? You know, you've gotten players to talk about things that they haven't spoken about to any media. Like when you're kind of sitting down with the player, what's your approach? Yeah. um, I mean, it's. It's definitely like pretty extensive, but I think that the main thing I would say is that I try to just ask what I'm asking, like as opposed Mm -hmm. to like fluffing it up or like putting too many words in it. And I think that just asking the thing that you are trying to get answered tends to get you better answers. Like the, the example I always think about is I'd interviewed DeMar DeRozan when he was on the Spurs and the Raptors at the time that I interviewed him they were in the Eastern Conference Championship and of course went on to win it all that year with Kawhi and I was interviewing him while the Raptors were in the Eastern Conference Championships and on Twitter of course the whole conversation was okay the Raptors were able to get here with Kawhi they weren't able to do it with DeMar like there, it was all this conversation about was DeMar good enough for the Raptors and of mm-hmm. course, that is feels like a very, a very personal question, or at least a very, a very hard question to have to ask somebody. Um, and so sometimes your instinct in that moment is to like figure out how to fluff up the question when really what you're trying to say is just, do you feel like you were good enough on the Raptors? So uh, I remember when I sat down with him, I just said, you know, right now the narrative is that the Raptors couldn't get there with you, that you could only get there with Kawhi. Like, what is your response to that? And it feels like a jarring thing to say to somebody, but I could tell, like, he, yeah. Preached, yeah. you know, like, it feels very jarring. But if I would have asked it any other way, then I'm asking a different question. So I'm not mm-hmm. going to get the answer that I'm looking for. So I'm, I'm always looking to just ask the exact questions so that they talk about it in the way that I am looking for them to. And he went on this really great, really, really great um, response, just saying that he was the sacrificial lamb for the Raptors, that everything that he did with the franchise is what allowed them to be in the position they are today. And it was really thoughtful. And he hadn't been given the space to talk about it in that way because he wasn't being asked a direct question. So I just think my number one thing I try to do is ask very direct, direct questions. Like I interviewed Jimmy when he was in Philly right after the Timberwolves. And I was just like, are you a bully? Because everyone is saying you're a bully. Like, are you a bully, you know? But, and you know, instead of saying like, okay, you know, you had this fight in Minnesota, like what happened there? You're not asking what happened because you know what happened. You're right. asking like, is Jimmy this mean person that people are saying? Which in my opinion, no, he's not. Jimmy's great. I love Jimmy. But that is probably the number one thing I would say is that I try to just ask what I'm trying to ask and then work backwards from there. 
Yeah, you just go for it, honestly. Like, you just go for it. And, like, you can see that, like, the players respect, right? Like, you're doing your job and you're doing it at the highest level. And you can see that comfortability. So, that's amazing. Yeah, I think we're going to transition. We'll get to know you off the court, off the field. But tell us, like, who is Taylor Rooks when she's not working, right? Which I know we're all working all the time, but <laughs> 24-7. Um, but, like, you know, when you're not working, when you're just with your dog or with your friends, like, what are some things that you're really into that have nothing to do with sports? Yeah. Oh, I mean, so many things. I mean, of course you said my pup. I love my pup. And I'm sorry if you hear her chomping on her food. I don't know how loud it is, but it is like. <laughs> oh, you're good. <laughs> Okay. Um, but yes, play with my dog. Um, I'm a lover. I'm a friend. Um, I'm a big, big, big TV buff. Like I really, really like te re watching television shows um, more so than movies. Um, I love reading. I try my hardest to read a book a month. Um, I just finished a really, really good one. What was it? Okay. So funny enough, it's actually a book called Butts. Okay. <laughs> almost like a cultural and social commentary about butts and like why they have become, they have started to mean like so much to women and how in so many ways, like the way that like society views us and our bodies can be like very damaging, but it's really good. Like it's a very, very it's smart book um, that everyone should read. It's really good. I think the author's name is Heather Radke, but yeah, read a book called Butts. Um, and then I also like, I love Pilates. I love playing tennis. Um, I love eating. I probably should have started with that. Um, <laughs> I love, love going like to shows. Um, I really like, what else? I mean, I feel like I like so many things. I try to have different experiences, um, traveling, but I would, um, I'd probably say that those are the main things. Yeah, that's amazing. That's awesome. Um, and I saw on TikTok recently that you talked a lot about your hair as well. Like, and trust me, I can relate. So I had to ask for the girlies, really for myself, um, what is your hair care routine? Because I know how much time that takes, whether it's straight and curly braids. Um, but yeah, give us your, your hair care routine as well. Yeah, I mean, well, so now I'm really trying to like experiment with my hair more. I mean, for a really long time, I was just doing the braids and the locks. I started that in the pandemic. And to me, that's the easiest hair care routine because you don't do anything. <laughs> like your hair yeah. is braided and it is good for like two months. Uh, and I love that. It's really hard when I have my hair straight, but I really like the look of straight. So I literally, like what, a week ago, I tried like a clip-in wig for the first time, which I have on now. Get into it, thank you. Uh, <laughs> so I'm doing that. Um, and then sometimes I wear it curly, but I mean, my hair care routine, I really try to just do protective styles because I want my hair to stay healthy and full and thick and all the things. So if I can do things where I can put very little heat on it. I try to do that because there was a time in my life that I was putting heat on it all the time. And it was just bad for me, bad for my hair health. Um, and so I have, I've tried to move away from that some. Yeah, I relate. Girl, we all were. There was a time when like we all were straightening our hair and you know, now, I mean, I haven't straightened my hair in like five, six years maybe. And, and so I'm like, but it's also short and curly, but no, I completely resonate. Um, but I love it. I love, love, oh. love your cut. I keep on saying, like, I think my, I want the next wig I do to be short. Like, I just love Ooh. that short kind of pixie-ish look. I just, it's so cute. It's so you Rockstar would vibes. rock it. Yeah. You would rock it. Ooh, sitting down for an interview, I would be like, okay, Taylor. Yeah, that's fire. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, sweet. Well, I think we'll transition to the last part of the podcast. It's all things fashion, internet, internet, internet. culture. So Mr. League Fits himself had to ask you. I always got it now. So obviously, like I'm like you, I love the players as much as I love the game. And so a big part of that is the self-expression with fashion. Um, give me your style starting five for basketball right now. Oh, what a good question. Oh, my mm. goodness. Okay. Can it just be any five? Like I don't have an order. It's just like five. Yeah, yeah. Just starting five. Um, Shay. Mm -hmm. 
Devin Booker. I just love how like Devin is not trying too hard. You know, like yeah. Devin. Anyone could wear that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. his closet's like so attainable. Totally, it's so attainable, and it is him. Like he's not trying to yeah. like be anything else. Like he's like, this is my style. This is how I show up. It's his aesthetic. Like his wardrobe looks like his car. Yeah. His, his car looks like his girlfriend. His girlfriend looks like his <laughs> his architectural digest video. Like everything so about true. Devin Booker is like so connected. He is so committed to the bit in a way that like <laughs> nobody is. Even like his new basketball shoe, like it feels like mm -hmm. Devin. Like the sleekness yeah. and like kind of simple. Mad simple. Shape. I don't know. It's just it's it's very him. So. He's not trying, but like he's also trying. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep, yep. <laughs> it's a complicated. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. so effortlessly trying. <laughs> I'm a big book fan, too. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah. Shay, Devin. I mean, I gotta put LeBron in there. Like, I I do mm -hmm. like how LeBron dresses. Um. It's just the thing with putting LeBron in any category. You're, it feels like an easy answer. Like, oh. yeah. No. Nah. I was low key a LeBron fashion hater for a little bit because oh. like at the we do like the league fits awards at the end of the year. People was like, why did you why didn't you include LeBron? I'm like, well, he dresses cool, but he doesn't dress as cool as like, you know, I don't know Terry Rozier or like these random guys that aren't like as popular as a LeBron James. But low key this year, he been putting that. You know, he's, been putting, he's been putting that shit on. Like dad swag, LeBron is so elite. I'm like, okay, King, mm -hmm. we see you, King. Good little walk with his fits. Like it just all yeah. works. You know what I mean? Also, yeah. sorry, pause. I just had a like a realization. So you do league fits? Yeah. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Man, I don't know if I knew that Slam did league fits. Yeah. yeah yep. Whoa, okay. Cool. Didn't know that. Well, I love League Fits. Follow big fan. League Fits loves Taylor Rooks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Um Okay, so where am I at? Okay, Shay, Devin, LeBron. LeBron. Okay, who else is style? We've come a long way since the Tom Brown uh, suit shorts of 2018. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm like running through teams in my head. Okay, this is a bit of a, it's like a different choice. And it's more, okay. it's more that I have liked seeing the, like the evolution of him getting into fashion in these ways, which is mm -hmm. also kind of coinciding with this burst he's having. Like all of a sudden, Tyrese Halliburton's a fashionist. Oh, you know ball, you know ball. Yes. yes. Couldn't agree more. He hit him and I said, uh, fashionista Tyrese, like you care about your clothes now. And it's like, you can see like he's, He's kind of like feeling himself some. It's like, I got to look good in my, in my tunnel fit now that people are paying attention. <laughs> yeah. Bro hasn't worn a sneaker in, in the tunnel yeah. like all season. Like straight loafers, yeah. straight derbies, straight boots. Like yeah. it, he, he looks like the... His little captions with his fits. Hold on. He had put mm -hmm. one the other day and I was like... Uh... Which I love his little hats. Like his little yes. like, Peaky Blinders hats. Yep. Oh my god! Shout out Tyrese. He we looks see like you, Tyrese. He looks like the he looks like a person in Soho, like the worst person you've ever met in your life in Soho. Except he's super cool and he's a he's an and he's an NBA player who's yeah. also like super <laughs> good at basketball. Yeah, he's the best. Like you won't meet a better person than Tyrese. So it's yeah. like it's really cool that he's also having this like emergence. But I'm like, how many takes did this take, Tyrese? So you just <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's the look away. I gotta get my fit pick off, but no, he's he's killing it. And honestly, I'm looking at his page, and it is basically a fashion page now. It's, it's like on his really And the the funny thing is, is his rookie year in the league, because we you know we do the league fits awards, and there's always like an all rookie team and a rookie of the year. And I remember that was like kind of like a beat year for like rookies yeah. dressing up. Like it was the year before like Jalen Green, Josh Christopher, etc. And so he won our rookie of the year, but he literally would wear like a graphic tee, like mesh shorts with like a three inch inseam, ankle socks with like his like super skinny legs. And like, he, I've talked with him about this, so I feel like I'm yeah. not dissing too hard. Like it was, it was like pretty atrocious. So it was like, yeah, like a size medium tee, tiny shorts and like some dunks. Like he's, he's come a long way. I'm we a big see you, supporter. Tyrese. Yeah. Shout out to Tyrese. He also, I did this collab with Mayfair. It was like sweats. And he wore it mm -hmm. to the game and he had posted That's it cool. and he bought it. So shout out to Tyrese for sure. Um, and my last one would maybe be. I 
Roll. It's a tough choice. Trust me, I get yeah. it. Yeah. Because I mean, obviously, like I like how Jalen Green dresses. Like, I, it's great, mm -hmm. but it's not. I don't know if I'd put him in my personal five in terms of like. Yeah. Yeah, I like. Um, maybe I will put. Who are some people I'm missing? Um, here, Jordan Clarkson, yeah. Jeremy Grant, Terry Rozier. Dresses. Jordan is another yeah. one who, even though it is like, you know, kind of like in your face and a bit like outlandish, it's him. Like that is yeah. his style. That's it doesn't feel like he's trying too hard. Yeah. Like he's not forcing the issue, you yeah. know? Yeah. He's very like cool, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like the, the He's a rock star. Yeah, he's a total, total rock star. Um, so I'll put him. I like people that have like an aesthetic. So that that's my five. Me too. Another guy who's like, his house looks like his wardrobe. His yes, wardrobe looks yes, like his yes, girlfriend, yes. like et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Except like the exact opposite of Devin Booker. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But equally as cool. Yeah, if there was a spectrum, yeah, it'd be Devin Booker here, Jordan Clarkson here. Aesthetic is like the internet, like word of the century. Oh, yeah. Like, I feel like we've kind of lost track of what like aesthetic really means, but also like, I love it. Yeah. Speaking of internet, <laughs> we have a question, a little game that we play with every guest where we feel like the best way to get to know someone is based on your algorithm. The best way to judge someone is what yes. we're really trying to say. What does what what does your explore page look like? Yeah. Judge me. Okay, let me go to my explore. Page. And I will show. Let me like go to it. Okay. Wow, real. Our last guest was like took it took his time. Yeah, no, it's we've got dogs uh we've got <laughs> basketball graphics we've got some jack we've got like <laughs> fashion stuff and food and a shirtless jason kelsey <laughs> 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 burly things but yeah that's really it <laughs> that's so funny okay nothing, too, nothing crazy nothing crazy yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it's a lot of like sport, sport lifestyle, which I guess now includes Taylor Swift. So, yeah, yeah, we're big fans of that, by the way. So people are like, oh my gosh, men on the internet are like so triggered by the whole Taylor Swift thing. Oh my thing. god! I'm like, this is so sick. I was like, have you, have you seen the Taylor Swift? Uh, so are you ever? Do you go on? Oh my gosh, yes, that's what I'm yes. trying to bring up. <laughs> this is the thing about this that I feel like is sometimes like lost amongst the people that mm -hmm. are just annoyed that she's on camera during the game yeah. this has encouraged so many young girls and women to watch football and it's really cool because what they're seeing through watching it is like this is really fun this is for everyone like so much so that they have a reddit thread where they are live <laughs> posting the wow. nfl playoffs and like obviously it's funny that someone's like oh my god what is a touchback but that's how you learn the that's game. That's how you learn, yeah. Yeah, like I think it's it's really great. I have no complaints about like the Taylor Swift exposure because that means that football is becoming more inclusive of everyone. all people. And I think it's weird to complain about more women and young girls mm -hmm. getting into a sport. Um, so I'm... Yeah, let's not let's not gatekeep the biggest sports league in the world. Oh, like that's silly. let's not. Let's literally. yeah, like, like come on, what yeah. are we doing here? Yeah. And also, we said earlier, like we analyze sports too much. Yeah. Um the the Taylor Swift like subreddit gets a pass if they yes. want if they want to overanalyze like how many touches like yes McCall Hardman is getting like I'm I'm at peace with that. They can. They, they, what about the bitch? I said oh I said you know what we're just to like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're they're allowed. You're just like me for they real. They can dissect the game, dude. Forget like the like Skip Bayless debate shows. Yeah, I yeah, wanna, yeah, forget that. The, the Swifties they can analyze and, and debate the <sighs> tactical decisions of Andy Reid. I'm on board with that. Yeah, all I, in. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and I couldn't agree more. I love a pop culture sports crossover. Like I'm living for this. Every time I see Tay Tay, mm. I'm like, yes, Taylor, like do this. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah.
so thankful and grateful and just blessed and lucky uh, that I get to do this and I get to interview people and I get to come on shows like Hoopish and talk to you all. So thank you so much uh, for giving me your space and having me on. Yeah, no thank doubt. you so much. No, this was amazing. It was an honor. Ladies and gentlemen, Taylor Rooks, the one and only. Yeah, no, thank you so much. This was so much fun. And thank you for showing us your, your For You page as well. Oh, yeah, yes. real. Nothing, yeah. nothing embarrassing. Luckily, I showed you all IG and not TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> That's so real. Yeah. S season two, we're just going to make you swipe through 10 videos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then I'm like, I'm just like lying, making it up. I won't like show my screen. But no, I'm, I'm very into TikTok in the moment. Yeah. Me too. It only shows me what I want to see. It's great. Yes. It's great. And you can just infinitely scroll. I'm like, I need to get yes. some sleep. I'm on video one. You know, you can download the videos now. Like if you're on a flight without yes. Wi-Fi, you can pre-download like an hour's worth of videos. Yeah. <laughs> I did that recently. Yes, it knew I was at the airport, can. which I guess is scary, but also like, I'm not like a spy, like who cares? <laughs> And uh, it like prompted, it was like, would you like to like pre-download videos? The only downside is you can't read the comments, which is like half the good yeah. in TikTok. But like, I still got to like swipe through TikTok for like 30 minutes on my flight with that, no Wi-Fi. And then I bought the Wi-Fi and continued to watch him. That changes the game. Mm -hmm. Like it really did. Like I am, wow, we've got me learning about League Fits and Slam. We now have me knowing that TikTok, you can download. Well, you know, I'm just kind of creepy. They knew you were there for it. So I don't <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, no. TSA pre check because I don't want to get my fingerprint and say, hold on. No, y'all don't need my me. fingerprint. <laughs> Finally, someone said well, it. Literally, same. Yeah, I've flown with you, Sway. You be easy in line. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you be easy. Ian will just leave me. I'm like, damn, oh my God. Bye. You can have my fingerprints. You can have whatever. I am not like, waiting in no damn. lines. Y'all got me. I'll see up. you at the terminal in 40 minutes. Yeah, you Bye. be easy. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much. Yes.